name is Hector Velasquez and welcome to GCSAA Inside the Shop. Now, if you have visited your local DIY store, one thing you have noticed in the lawn and garden department is that we're starting to see almost every two-stroke equipment battery powered. That's right, battery powered chainsaws, hedge trimmers, weed eaters, uh, push mowers. There's even a zero turn mower out there and a riding electric mower. Now eventually, some of this equipment's gonna break down. Nothing lasts forever, right? What is gonna be the best tool in your box to help you find the problem? That's right, it's gonna be the multimeter. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the multimeter, go over some of the uses that it has to help you find any potential problem in this electronic equipment. Now let me get some batteries put in this thing and we'll get started. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly here remove the back cover and we're gonna install two AAA batteries. This is what this particular meter takes. Now while we're back here, check this out. There's two fuses you're gonna see here. These are for the 10 amp testing circuits on this meter. You wanna make sure that if that's not working on your meter, you might have a blown fuse back there. All right, and we're up and running. Okay, great, let's get started now. Now, our meters only are as good as our probes, so we wanna check out our probes. We're gonna install them here real quick on the meter. And basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna test for continuity or for ohms, resistance. So we're gonna make sure that we select that on the meter, touch our two probes, and we're getting a reading of 0 0.5. 0 0.2, it would be the best, but this will work. We just need to make sure to account for that in our testing. All right, let's have a look at the scale selectors on this multimeter and see what they mean. All right, right here we have the letter V. The letter V stands for volts, and this little symbol up here, this squiggly line, that's a sine wave. That stands for alternating current, or AC. And the bottom symbol here, the line with the dash, that's direct current, DC. Over here we have the ohms symbol, and then we have the continuity symbol. Okay, then over here we have our amps for testing amperage, both AC and DC. And this is only for 10 amps and under. And then this is our scale for milliamps, both AC and DC, and microamps, both AC and DC as well. All right, now when we're testing for amperage, we're gonna have to move our red probe to this selection when we're testing for 10 amps, and then for microamps, we're gonna have to move our probe here. Otherwise, they're gonna stay over here. Let me take this off real quick, all right? This is where we normally probably would keep it at most of the time. We're testing for voltage, continuity, uh, ohms would be here, and then our black probe would stay in this selection right here. All right, let's get this put back on real quick. Okay, let's, let's see how we test for DC voltage. Now we're gonna move our selector to the letter V. We wanna make sure we're on DC, and that's our symbol there. All right, and we're gonna test voltage on this battery, how much voltage we have. And we're just gonna put the red probe on the positive, the black probe on the negative, and we're getting a reading of 2.6. Each battery is 1.5, so this is good. All right, what about when we're testing for alternating current? Well, same thing, we're gonna put it on the letter V, and this is automatically gonna to default to the AC side. So we're already there, and AC alternating current is what you're gonna find in your house. Um, we're gonna just stick our probes in the socket here, and we got a reading of 117, which is good. All right, now how do we test for DC amperage? Well, it's really easy, we're gonna get our selector. First thing we wanna do is move our probe over to the 10 amp circuit, put this out. All right, let's plug this in, there we go. And then we're gonna move over to the 10 amp selector. Once again, we're gonna have to make the switch from AC to DC. Now remember that fuse back there? If this, we were testing anything above 10 amps, it's gonna blow that fuse on the back of the meter. Now we have to be in series with the circuit. So we're gonna unplug a wire here. We're gonna make sure that our circuit is live. So we're gonna turn it on. 
and we're going to become part of that circuit. We're going to let the current run through the meter, through the light, and we're going to test how much amperage that light is pulling. And it's pulling 0.16. Okay, next we're going to have a look at continuity testing. Now, when we're testing for continuity, we're making sure we have a solid connection from point A to point B. Perfect example is, you know, here we're touching our two probes together, solid connection. We're hearing an audible sound there as well. So this is great when you can't look at your meter to see if you have a solid connection between two points. For example, here we're going to test this light bulb. Now we're going to take this light bulb and we're going to test the continuity of the light bulb. And here we're getting that audible sound. That means we have a solid connection from point A to point B. This would be telling us that this light is good. All right, now another good thing to test, another component would be to test switches to see if our switch is working. The switch is off, so we should not be getting any sound here. All right, and that's good. Now let's go ahead and turn the switch on and see what happens. We should get an audible sound. There we go. So now we know this switch is good. If we were not getting a sound, this would tell us the switch is bad. Well, as you can see, understanding a multimeter really isn't that difficult. I want to thank you for joining me here today on GCSAA Inside the Shop, where we're helping technicians one wrench at a time. <laughs>